Tonight in Project Education, AI is rapidly changing our world, including how your child learns at school. Teachers and districts are now faced with how to use it and whether to even allow it. Yeah, and while Portland Public Schools is in the process of developing policies pre to present to the board, one small nearby school district is leading the way with teaching students how and when to use AI in the classroom. K2's Deb Knapp reports. Carroll's Elementary in Kelso, Washington may be on a country road, but inside Mrs. Bream's classroom. We're going to keep our Chromebooks closed. Students are embracing the technological future of education. All right, Cougars. So Her fourth and fifth grade combined morning. class regularly uses artificial intelligence while learning. So today we're going to try out a tool, an AI tool that's going to help give you some book recommendations. The day we visited, she taught her students how to use it for book suggestions. So at this age, it's really just um, trying to introduce them to the idea of AI. You know, in the past, I was actually a little bit more hesitant to bring AI into the classroom, but I realized that this is their future. Both Washington and Oregon Departments of Education have released guidance on how to use AI in the classroom, but many districts are still shy to introduce it. Kelso, however, a district with just 5,000 students is leaning into the new tool. Brenda Sargent helped lead the AI Advisory Committee. How does Kelso compare to other districts in Washington? When we've been at conferences, I think we're a few steps ahead as far as putting this in front of the students. We presented some AI guidelines to our students. They actually, all of our 6th through 12th grade students received the same presentation and had to review our guidelines and sign off on them so that we had a guarantee that they understood that there was no, um, oh, I didn't know I couldn't use this, that we actually put that in front of all the students. I don't think a lot of districts are there yet. While the technology is introduced in elementary school, it's more common for middle and high schoolers. Principal Lacey DeWert says it's important to keep up with technology. We knew our kids were already using it. That was a given, which is why we recognized we had to get our staff some tools and some training to be able to use it within their classroom. The district has a sliding scale for teachers to decide how much AI should be allowed for each assignment. Is there a propensity to cheat with AI? It does happen. Um, and what we recommend to our teachers is know your students, know your students' writing, get a baseline. Because um, if there's a student who's writing at a certain level and all of a sudden they turn in an assignment that is leaps and bounds above that, then it's time for a conversation. If the student does use artificial intelligence, they must cite it as a reference. While Kelso accepts AI in class, other districts simply block sites on school-issued devices. We used to. We used to block it. And then in October of last fall, we made the decision as the advisory team to unblock it. And it was an equity issue. We recognize kids have devices at home. And to say it's blocked on a school device, but if I have a personal device, I can use it, that didn't feel right to us. Teachers can choose to block it in the classroom. That's up to the teacher. And so that's where they would say zero. You know, we are not using AI at all. They've set that expectation ahead of time. And then the students know that this is work they create themselves. DeWert believes teaching students how to use AI responsibly will help them later in life. They're going to go into a workforce that we have never experienced. And so we know they're going to have to use this, and they're already using it. And so now it's like, hey, you could use this platform for this tool. You could use this platform for that tool. And exposing to that before they leave us so that they're ready to go and gain employment. And they're learning how to use AI as a tool instead of a crutch. We don't want to, um, I guess, give it too much power, you know, beyond us as the human element. But I think for me, I, the way I think of it as a teacher and the way I encourage students to think of it, it's more like a thought partner, right? That was Deb Knapp reporting.